Hi, in a previous video, which I'll link in at the end and down below if you haven't seen it, these uh, KRK Rokit or Rocket 6 uh, powered studio monitor speakers, and it's not just these, but most of the popular studio monitors on the market, hashtag not all uh, studio monitors, actually produce this uh, low level uh, hissing noise. Um, generally from the tweeter, there is a bit of low level hum from the speaker, but basically from the tweeter, if you put your ear up close to it with no input signal whatsoever, then it generates this internal hiss. And this is common across most of your popular brand uh, studio monitor speakers. Some of them uh, can be many thousands of dollars. And a common comment on the previous video was that, hey, well, what do you expect on these cheap Chinese speakers, right? Well, one, they're not that particularly cheap. And as I said, some speakers in the studio monitors, uh, top brand names into the thousands of dollars still also have this issue. But Hashtag, not all of them. Um, and the, some people were saying, well, this brand doesn't do it. This top end uh, brand, you know, really expensive top end brand, they don't do it. And then somebody else goes, oh yeah, I've got those. And yeah, there's still some noise on there. You know, so like, it's just common as mud across most of your popular, I won't see the, say the real high end ones, because apparently uh, they're, you know, <laughs> they're much more expensive for a reason, but all of your most popular and and largest selling brands, your KRKs, your Yamahas, your JBLs, etc., etc., they all tend to have uh, some amount of uh, noise or hiss, uh, particularly in the uh, high frequency driver, the tweeter. And it's not really an issue in terms of uh, signal to noise ratio. I mean, some might be a lot worse than others and you might be able to hear them if you're in a real silent studio or something like that with no input signal going in. But, you know, it generally it's not a problem. Once you put a signal on there, the signal to noise ratio is just so ridiculously high, it doesn't matter. So it doesn't affect the performance of these things, but it's still there and it's noticeable and it's annoying. So. <laughs> I thought we'd have another quick look at this. Now this speaker is actually the other one that I've uh, got. The previous one, we noticed that we had about, uh, I think it was about 250 microvolts uh, RMS noise as measured on the uh, 121GW here across the uh, 4 ohm tweeter on the KRK. This other one that I've got is actually um, significantly higher than that. Let's call it about, you know, 430 odd uh, microvolts. And you can, it, it is noticeably a bit louder. So let me see if I can pick up that noise for you. And this Rode M5 uh, instrument mic that I'm using here, I've got the gain turned up to absolute max on my Sony NX80 uh, camera uh, audio amplifier here, and you can barely hear it. And that might sound loud, but really I can't hear it from here. I've got to put my ear a couple of inches away before I can hear that. So we tried various uh, techniques in the previous video. I won't go over them again to try and isolate the noise, but we basically isolated it down to the uh, output power amplifier chip on here. It's basically inherent in the noise floor of that chip. It doesn't matter about input termination or anything else. But the one thing we didn't do is actually try and isolate the power supply on this. Now, if you have a look at the schematic, there's uh, three separate supplies for this thing. Uh, the first one is uh, plus minus 27 volts which is uh, goes directly to the uh, low frequency power driver and that's not the one we're interested in today and that then is uh, goes into some uh, regulation to transistor regulators there to produce plus minus 15 volts for the um, op amps on the front end of this thing which we've determined they contribute very little to the noise of this thing and we can get it to change a little bit like five percent or ten percent or something that it was but the bulk of it's coming from with inside the high frequency amplifier which is the TDA 2052 and that's got its own separate uh, power supply of uh, plus minus 19.5 volts and that's coming uh, directly from a uh, just a standard full wave bridge rectifier on the input uh, directly to some filter capacitors and that's it so I thought hey you know what if even though it's just you know it's just 50 hertz but some people said hey there could be some you know bridge rectifier noise or something like that being generated on the high current uh, pulses or something like that but it doesn't matter this is noise is down at the quiescent current of the amplifier but anyway i thought to answer this question we'd actually power the high frequency amplifier directly from batteries and 
see if the noise goes away. See if it is actually related in any way to the power supply. I don't believe it is. I believe it's the internal architecture of the uh, like the power amplifier stages within the amplifier chip, the topology used and all that sort of stuff. There's various, you know, you could do a PhD thesis on uh, noise in. This one's actually a uh, class AB amplifier. But hey, we've got a baseline here. Let's plug in some batteries see if it makes a difference. And of course you can't just use a lab power supply for this because they're also inherently noisy. So, you know, really the best way to do it is just power it for some batteries. So I'll cobble together uh, a plus minus 18 volt battery rail. The quiescent current of the uh, amplifier, the TDA uh, 2052, is only like 40 milliamps. So we don't need a lot. We could have even used like nine volt batteries, but I'll use some triple A's. Okay, I've got a plus minus uh, 18 volt supply near enough to plus minus uh, 19. I'm not sure what the actual, because it's unregulated from the transformer, not sure of the actual voltage. It's, it's going to be good enough for the purposes of today's experiment. Um, I'm drawing 21 and a half milliamps from this and I've got a so it's a plus minus uh, 18 volt rail and it's split like that. Now we're getting nothing on the output. I think um, that's because it's in mute mode. Whoops. Right, so what I'm going to do is get in there and actually uh, short out the cathode of the diode on the mute circuit. I'm going to short that out to ground here, and that should enable or unmute the uh, high frequency amplifier. So we well, probably expect the current to go up, and uh, we'll watch the uh, voltage across the uh, tweeter. So let's give this a go. Wee, hello. 60 milliamps, and that's interesting a hundred microvolts so it is certainly lower but it's probably still going to be there okay let's try and listen to this now i've uh, permanently soldered in the uh the, the mute mod so that's not as loud on the vu meter on the camcorder and although it's uh measuring a lot lower at 100 microvolts to my ear it's still the same type of uh, white noise. It's a little bit lower, but not by a huge amount. It's still there, you can still hear it, but it has, it has reduced. So, you know, uh, that is reflecting on the uh, RMS noise measurement. And I just realized I had the input board, which is not being powered, but I still had it connected. And whoa, <laughs> there you go, I disconnected it. So it's now flapping around in the breeze. So I need to disconnect it from the other end or uh, short the input out. Okay, so what I've done now is I've just uh, shorted across, you probably can't see it, but I've shorted across the uh, 10K input resistor down there. I've still got my uh, bypass on uh, for the mute and I've disconnected this so it's not, so nothing's flapping around in the breeze. It's connected directly, short loop, directly through the correct ground, back through to there and we still get our 100 microvolts and, well, let's have a listen. Yep. Still there. And we'll just record that. There we go. So there you go. That's an interesting experiment. We were able to actually get the noise down using a DC supply here. Granted, it's not the same voltage, but it's near enough. It's like 17 and a half volts under load. I've checked that, you know, as opposed to 19.5. That doesn't explain the drastic drop in uh, noise that we actually uh, got there. So even if we short the input, a lot of people said, oh, it's grounding and all that ground loops and all that sort of stuff. No, it's got nothing to do with it. There is noise inherent within the uh, amplifier chip in there. It's just inherent in the topology. But the interesting thing is we were able to lower it, but I can still hear it. So Really, you know, I might maybe do a part three investigating how to clean up the supply. So maybe there is some uh, junction noise coming from the uh, bridge rectifier diodes or coming, you know, from some, you know, coming in from the input line or whatever going through. So maybe you could add some filtering heavy duty filtering because they're heavy power rails. You can't just put little piss weak uh, filtering in there. It's got to be uh, high current stuff. Maybe you could, you know, you regulate it better, but you're talking about beefy power regulation now um, in that respect, but that can introduce its own noise and that sort of stuff. But potentially we could put some, uh, you know, uh, passive component uh, noise reduction in there or something like that. But unless I get it down to zero, 
like like inaudible basically i can still hear it i'm not really going to be happy so anyway there you go that was an interesting experiment it's still there but it is somewhat reduced but still if i put my ear within two three inches of this thing i can still hear it so yeah what do you do um anyway i thought that was an interesting experiment and if you actually look at the data sheet for this chip and the uh, input referred noise and multiply it by the gain of uh, 27 that this thing has, you know, it's starting to get close to this. So it's like the input referred noise. There may be some additional noise internally from the topology or whatever, um, you know, the class AB topology in there and uh, all that sort of jazz. But ultimately, yeah, we've, you know, reached the limit of that amplifier chip and most amplifier chips on the market, um, like off the shelf ones. So if you wanted your own lower noise one, you're really going to have to uh, roll your own. And most manufacturers just don't bother to do that. Maybe some of the real high end ones do. And as I've mentioned before, just be careful about, you know, if you're testing this on your monitor speakers, make sure it doesn't have an auto mute function. This one doesn't do it, but a lot of them will uh, actually mute. If you've got no input signal, they'll actually mute the output drive and this one is able to mute the output driver down to inaudible levels. You can't hear it. It's basically down to zero as you saw on the measurement. But this one, this particular speaker only does that on power up. But there are other models that will actively do that. So it doesn't mean that the noise isn't there. It is. They're just uh, sort of masking it. And yeah, that's the whole point, the whole intention why the manufacturers actually add that feature is because they want to use a you know a, like an off-the-shelf audio amplifier chip like this which has some noise and with the uh you know excellent generally excellent uh, high sensitivity speakers inside these things you can actually hear the noise of the amplifier chip and they want to mask that so if you like that video please give it a big thumbs up and as always uh comment down below or over on the ev blog forum and let me know if you want me to you know do anything further with this and try and get it eliminated but why well, yeah we can get it down a little bit but i don't think we are going to be able to get it to zero unless we change that uh amplifier chip and you can't just get i've looked and you can't just get like a pin compatible or even a pin similar compatible one um that you know you could bodge in or something like that they all you know, have this inherent noise flaw anyway catch you next time